This is Rock Jam Man is with David from Breaking In the Sequence. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? Uh, you know, just chilling, you know, just got home from school, you know, stuff like that. You know, it worked. Oh, be. <coughs> oh, so how old are you? Uh, I am 10 years old. I started this business when I was nine. Well, that's great. It's amazing. <laughs> I started playing drums when I was 10. That's awesome, man. I actually am taking drums in band, actually. Band for school. So, yeah, yeah. That's cool. It'll be uh, 50 years in a few months here when I turn 60. <laughs> Playing drums. No, I'm kidding. Not quite there. So tell me all about this band and how you guys got together. Uh, Joe Tabak and Chris Dorami and I we're in a previous band together um, that, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, I swallowed wrong, okay. that we ended up uh, getting rid of some people in the band. And then we did a singer search, which is, uh, you know, posting stuff on the internet and accepting applications or, or not applications, submissions from singers all over the world. And we got lucky enough to find Richard and, uh, our other guitar player, Mike Martin, had been a longtime friend of the band, and I didn't even know he played guitar until we, we found Richard and started this new band. So then he, he started playing with us, and it just worked out. And, um, I mean, here we are a few years later. That's kind of the short version, honestly. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I love that new single of yours, Twine. It's a really cool one, man. It is very good. If you like Twine, you're going to like our releases that we have coming in the future. We have a whole other set of songs that we actually haven't even recorded in a, in a recording studio yet, just our rehearsal studio recordings that are, in my opinion, in all of our opinions, take it to another level. Another level of songwriting, another level of definitely the vocals, another level of groove. It's, it's, it's completely unbelievable. The, the next, uh, the newest stuff we have, which we have not recorded yet. I, who came up with that, uh, with the idea for the electronic samples on this track? Who came up with that? Well, I don't know if you're familiar with my past playing in corn. I assume you probably are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I use uh, rolling pads to either trigger sounds or, or samples or trigger sounds and play beats to it. So I already kind of had the setup going. Um, even before we were biased, breaking a sequence. And so I just uh, find pockets in the songs where we think, well, we, where we all think that sample sounds or, or drums would be appropriate. So we just kind of go from there. I'm actually kind of looking forward to actually incorporating more samples. I'm playing them all, of course. There, there's no, um, well, except for a couple intros. There's no hit and go samples really in this band. I love the animation from that video. It really was cool. It really was cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Now this, uh, now this is a standout to, uh, now this is a standout single to the Falling Up EP you put out earlier this year. Is that right? Yes. Now I know you are trying to get your next EP out. Are you thinking about doing it early next year? Um. Yes. We. I don't think we have the date nailed yet. But yes, you're trying to get more songs out. You started getting a moment when you came out in 2019. Did the lockdown sent you uh, guys back at all? It sent you guys back. We only took maybe five or six weeks off from writing. So we wrote a bunch of songs during the lockdown and we worked a lot. So, well, yes, it set us back because we weren't able to play live shows or, you know, tour with anyone or do anything live for an audience. But we took advantage of it. We wrote a bunch of songs. And the songs we wrote are amazing. They're on another level than the songs you've heard. It had to be hard being uh, an upcoming band. That had to be pretty hard, you know. Well, Given sorry. the hit. <laughs> It's, it's always hard being a fresh band, an up-and-coming band. It's always hard. It's a lot of work. Now, I know you're... Are, are, are you comparing it to Korn? Yes. Yes. 
well yeah it's 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 a it's a whole different scale and a whole different level of of you know of, of everything so I mean, yeah, if I could snap my fingers and make this band as big as, as I was, w- it was when I was in corn, I would do it in a heartbeat. But, you know, you got to pay your dues in every band and, and work your way up, work your way through it. Now, your old band corn has the every album, every song, every book coming out this month. Did they contact you to be a part of it? Did they contact you at all? Or? No, I haven't spoken to those guys in a long time. Oh, okay, you really don't like each other then. Wow. Not even it's for the not, reunion. It's not really that. We, we just, no one has just reached out. Oh, okay. Nobody just says like, hey, what's up? No. Hmm. It just, everybody, it's, really to, it's just basically everybody's just like, saying, yeah, I don't need to talk to these people. I mean, I don't even know if it's that. It's just kind of, it just never happens. Hmm. Now, going back to those days, was it crazy making music? Didn't sound like anything was put out before? Well, to tell you the truth, we never thought of ourselves as being that band. We heard it a lot, and I've read a bunch that says that we are basically the inventors of the new metal genre. But honestly, it, it it's not like we when we play or you know I wake up in the morning and feel like I've made something up that no one else has ever done. There's not really a feeling that comes with it or a um, like a a satisfaction it just kind of it, it is what it is we, we wrote the music that felt comfortable to us and it came to us and it, th- that's kind of that's all it is for us it doesn't really you know there's no feeling with saying oh you guys were the the grandfathers of new metal there's no really feeling behind that it's kind of like okay i i hear it i understand it but it's not like it changes uh you know our, our attitude or anything or the way things appear to us you know we're just living our lives doing our thing when you first started playing, how did you know the song was going to be big? How did you know it was going to be too big? We didn't. We had no idea. We just started playing and, uh, you know, with a mix of all of our influences, came up with, obviously, this this new sound. And um, we played clubs all over Orange County, L.A., and we got to San Diego a few times, and we got to Sacramento a few times, and the more we played, the the, big, the bigger the crowd was. It's not like today. Pe- people really went out to clubs back then, you know, mm-hmm. the days of CDs, which are over. People really went out to see live music and, and bought CDs. And um, it, it just it just grew. We just started playing shows all over the place and it just totally grew. And at that point, we were in the middle of writing our first record. So the first record, unlike any other record, was written over the course of like a year and a half, two years of playing clubs everywhere. I mean, that first album ended up going like a double platinum. What was that like, achieving that level of frame from the very first album? Um, you know what? Honestly, we were on tour with Ozzy. And um, we were in his dressing room after a show one time. And our two managers and Sharon Osbourne, they walked into the room holding gold records for us all. And we didn't even know it had went gold. We had no idea. Um, so it was a total surprise. And it was, uh, it was a, an amazing feeling. I mean, just to think, you know, we had been on tour at this point for maybe a year and a half or so. And we were barely even getting radio play. It was all organic. Um, I mean, luckily we had a great record label. They got us on really good tours. So that was, I mean, that was the hugest thing for us is our record labels to, ability to get us on good tours. But we had no idea it was coming. There's no way we, you know, there's, we weren't on the internet like trying to check stuff and shit back then. It was just we're out playing shows, doing our thing, and all of a sudden we come in and or they come in with holding gold records. It was it was an amazing moment. Every so, the look on everyone's face was priceless. Man, that was so cool, man. That's so cool. Very cool. How did you guys deal with it? Deal with what? The fame. Um, I mean, everybody dealt with fame in a different way um personally i think people making my personal childhood dream come true since i was 10 years old of being able to play music for a living and play shows all around the world is the most amazing thing i mean aside from a few other things in my life they're pretty great too but it was, it was literally my childhood dream come true. And I could not be more grateful 
to all the fans that made it happen because without them, we would just been guys playing music in a rehearsal studio. Um, so every bit of thanks goes out to all the fans all around the world that allowed personally speaking for myself, my childhood dream to become my reality. I mean, I still can't believe it actually happened still to this day. It's amazing. And I'd have nothing but gratitude for the whole entire experience. And were you thrust into some amazing toys playing with huge artists? Say that again, I'm sorry. Uh, and were you uh, thrust into some amazing toys playing with you, Audrey, who a uh, uh, huge artist? I wouldn't say thrusts, but, but uh, I mean, we, we started out playing some pretty good shows from the beginning of our tour. I don't really, we did some, but I don't really remember unless I'm just totally blanking out. I don't remember ever doing like a really tiny club tour just on our own because of our record label and our booking agent, we started out playing pretty good shows on pretty good tours. Um, and at the time, you know, given our age, we're, you know, mid twenties, uh, it didn't really feel like we were being pushed into anything. It just felt like it was just all happening. Um, you know, we were out there playing shows all the time, touring, as, I mean, as much as possible, we toured a lot. And it just felt, it, it felt amazing to be able to go out there and finally play shows all around the country and eventually the world uh i think everyone would agree it, it felt it was a dream come true and it, it felt amazing i don't really know how to describe it the feeling of seeing people out there um i mean i've even talked to you know big huge famous actors and they're telling me that they're they're jealous of what we do because in their world they're you know some are green screen some are just little props or whatever but they're doing takes and different camera angles and over and over. So the instant gratification, even when the finished product is there, is not really the same. This is them telling me this. But it's not really the same as going out on a stage and seeing a big crowd and playing music and getting an instant reaction. Um, and that part is, I can't even describe how it feels to see all these people out there cheering and eventually, not at first, obviously, but eventually singing the songs with us. I mean, the feeling is, I can't even describe it, amazing. Uh, did you ever have a fanboy moment when you first started out? Did you ever have a fanboy moment? Um, no, not really, just because the, the whole fame aspect of it didn't really impress me. Uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I met some really, well, a bunch actually of really huge musicians and other people in the industry, but I never had a full fanboy moment. Like fully geeking out on somebody? <laughs> no, I, no, I haven't. Uh, I, I don't mean anything bad by that. I'm not saying I haven't met some really amazing artists that I really look up to. I have. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I was, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I was meaning nothing like that. Like, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was just saying. Did you ever have a moment where you're like, oh my god, it's them, it's them? Um, actually, no. I know. I, I, I did not. <laughs> Now tell me about playing Woodstock 99. Woodstock 99 was unbelievable. And uh, it was, how do I describe it? Well, from the stage view, people were, uh, geez, I can't see, geez. People mm -hmm. were as far back as I could completely see until I couldn't see anymore. The crowd was so big and when we went on and walked out on stage and saw the, saw the crowd, I think everyone's heart was beating incredibly fast. And um, it felt really amazing to see that many people enjoying our music. Um, they had separate towers of speakers, but the crowd was so big, there was like milliseconds of delay in, where the sound was heard. Even though they had a first tier and they had a second tier of speakers out in the crowd, because of the, the delay, the crowd was actually jumping in big waves. It was, it was amazing. It was crazy. But yeah, well, it felt, uh, I don't even know how to describe the feeling. It was, it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe we were actually there and playing for that many people. The documentary focuses on your performance. That had to be pretty cool seeing that. On Korn's performance? Yes. I didn't know that. Where do you find it? <laughs> uh, HBO Max, HBO Max. 
HBO Max is what's called uh, Woodstock Corner or something. I don't know. Uh, Woodstock '99. That's it. Really. It focuses on on corn. Yeah. Okay. About well, ten minutes of the movie. Ten minutes it would. But. Oh, ten minutes. Oh, gosh. Focus on the whole entire festival. You might get a little angry because some pe- you might get a little angry because some people might act really like rude in it. And just gonna let you know, it's gonna make Woodstock look like the total worst thing ever. It's gonna make really it- yeah. They're saying like how it was evil and everybody got hurt there. Oh, and this one lady who was there, she said, I had to leave for my safety because you know, people just a lot of sassy people there. Uh, honestly, I mean, that's really, that's, that's really sad to hear. Obviously I did not have that perspective because I was, you know, on stage and backstage. So I, I couldn't really relate or say anything about that other than I'm really sorry that that happened to a lot of people. And uh, I mean, on shows that we book, we do certain security majors and we just got booked on that show. We had nothing to do with security or crowd control or anything uh if it was booked today it probably would have multi gates to keep people up in sections i'm sure it would um but back then it was just pretty, basically open for everyone it was pretty crazy well yeah, trust i'm really me. sorry if anyone got hurt or sorry to the people that got hurt it was never our intention to, to have anybody get hurt absolutely not now I have to ask with uh cancel culture and, and the way everyone's so sensitive and now and you know like let's just say corn was starting out do you think you guys would have been able to put out that album today the first one yes um with cancer culture sensitivity i don't know honestly i mean the first thing that would determine that would be our record label you're probably talking about the song daddy and faggot right yeah yeah uh, I, I guess it would probably come down to if our record label would be, would be okay to release it because if they don't want to release it, we can't control that. Um, I would release it now uh, and just whatever people want to say, I would just say whatever you think is probably not that. It's not a bash on anyone. It's talking about life experiences and everyone has them, good or bad. It's not bashing on any kind of person. Um but yeah, I would release it. I would release it again today, right now, and just see where the ships fall. I'm surprised there was no cry. Uh, there was not some crybaby trying to get like a clown and faggot taken off of the album. I'm surprised. Right. Yeah, back in 1993 or four, there was no one. Yeah, n- nobody. Nobody. Nope. And. The 90s were cool in the 80s. Yeah. I'm, cl- clown and faggot are basically about being picked on. So, I mean, I don't oh. know. If, if people really dissected the, the lyrics, they would probably pretty easily be able to determine how their own. It just, but yeah, uh, you're right. A lot of the cancel culture, they would not even bother to dissect their lyrics. They would just hear certain words and whatever it's called. I don't really like saying the stupid word, be triggered. Whatever yeah. the heck that is. It's basically me triggered. I I don't get it. I I really don't even get my own. I really don't even get my own generation. Why am I in Z? Could I just go to like uh, boomer millennials? I don't know. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about the generation. Everybody's too sensitive now. Everybody has safe spaces. That's it. Yes, I, I don't understand it. And I don't think it's healthy for people. People need to go through experiences they need to deal with situations firsthand um they need to learn how to accept things they need to learn how to hear things they may not like and may make them uncomfortable and just learn to deal with it because that's life i have literally learned that since i was born i really learned that since i was born a good parent like a little tiny baby yeah basically yeah basically like, i'm not sensitive yeah <laughs> i'm not sensitive i'm not a part of <laughs> That's funny. I really love that album, man. It gets me super uh, pumped. It gets me super pumped. Still talking about the first record? Yes. Yes, I love it too. And you were on uh, seven albums. Is that right? Seven? Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
excuse me, eight records. Eight records, I guess I got it wrong. <laughs> That's so awesome. Corn Corn, I Life see that. is Peachy, Follow the Leader, Issues, Untouchables. Oh, you know what? You're right. Take a look in the mirror and see you on the other side. I counted our greatest hits on accident. Uh -huh. There's a big record behind me. Uh, I also see that Ice Cube one, that Ice Cube one. I, I, I didn't count that one. That's Family Values. Oh, okay. I accidentally counted our greatest hits. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm looking to a glare over here. Now tell me about the day Head quit and announced it on stage. Did he let you guys know first or did you hear it at the same time everybody else was? Everybody. Um, you know what? I'm trying to remember exactly how it happened. To be perfectly honest, I don't mean to be any disrespectful to Head or anybody else. I, I don't really remember how we were told it wasn't on stage definitely not um i'm pretty sure it was probably through our managers but to be perfectly honest i just don't remember okay other than it was a sad day okay. now why did you leave the band why did you leave the band um i left the band for a few reasons uh one of them was because when we started out, we were all equal members and everyone, everything was supposed to be voted on and everyone had equal say in everything. And that slowly turned into a different uh, way of things working that I totally 100% disagreed with. And at the same time, I uh, like three days before I filmed the last video on See you on the other side. Um, I was lifting weights in my garage and I was squatting, holding dumbbells. And there's a TV above me and I squatted down. Something on the TV got my attention and I fell backwards and um, hit the ground. And I actually broke four bones in my lower back. Wow. And, and that day we were shooting a music video. And after that happened, I couldn't even stand up straight. I had, I was like hunched over like this. I took a shower. I got in the car. I called the managers. I said, my back is so messed up. I don't even know if I can sit up on a drum stool to do this video today, but I was on my way. I got there. I had a masseuse waiting for me. Um, and then there was like, it was a small drum riser. It was kind of weird. So I kind of crawled up on it and I was able to sit on it. And um, it was actually a few years that went by before I actually had my back repaired, but I was in so much pain. I couldn't even do anything. And I went to a doctor and I was misdiagnosed by an x-ray of the bones. And that was, that went on for years before I went to a specialist because it got so bad. I couldn't even walk more than 10 feet without sitting down. And I went to another specialist and he held up my first x-ray and the new x-ray. And he said he could see from across the room in the first x-ray, my back was broken in four spots. So my inability to actually stand up, let alone walk or play or anything, it took a few months before I could actually even do any of those things. And um, once I could, I was never out of pain. I, it was killing me all the time. It was, it was unbearable. It was ridiculous. I'm so sorry to hear that, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, now I've got a synthetic disc and rods and pins on my back um, and arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me. My uh, Nana knows that thing. That's right. Yeah. I don't want to. Root man with Nana. That's cool. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm old, man. It's all good. <laughs> now, did you think you were just going to be taking a break and you would be allowed back in, you know, the band? Um, honestly, I didn't really know. Hmm. I didn't really know. I know you were angry in the past about this and, and lashed out at some of the members and no one can blame you, man. I mean, you were you were with these guys since you were 16 years old and they were more than friends. They were family and it had to hurt to have them turn their back on you and let Head rejoin the band. Yeah, that, that, that was pretty hurtful. Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. It was, it was pretty hurtful. Now I heard you uh, dropped out the uh, dropped out of school to be in um, the early version of Corn called LAPD. I did at seventeen, 
uh, all the guys were a couple years older. They moved down to Burbank. Uh, I, I don't know if you know where Burbank is. Um, they moved to Burbank and I, I had tried to drive down on weekends and rehearse with them. And it, it got, it really got really hectic. I mean, it was, it was killing me. And I told my mother, this is what I want to do with my life. And it was a, it was a longer conversation than that. And, and she, uh, <clears throat> she understood how committed I was. And I guess my talk with her was pretty convincing because she said, if I don't let you go and let you do this, you're going to resent me for the rest of your life. And she went with me down to my school and signed me out. And I think the next week I moved to Burbank and the rest. Uh, There's history. history. Yep. yep. That never sounds so. old. The rest is history for some reason, because I keep interviewing old rock stars. So I keep hearing it. And the rest is history. I am old. <laughs> Compared to you, yes. <laughs> but I got this man. Of course, man, of course, but I got all this right here. Signed, signed, some pictures, and another pinhead thing, and then a bunch of things right there, if you can see it all. If, uh, did you ever get a GED to go back? Did you ever go back to get a GED? No, you know what? The band was getting so busy, and the band before Corn actually had a record deal, and, I mean, it happened pretty, pretty quick. Oh. And I, I, don't, I don't think I ever consciously thought, I mean, well, yes, I did think this is what I want to do with my life. This is going to happen. I'm going to work hard enough to make it happen. All of us have the same mentality. You know, we were in the position where we were ready to work hard. We wanted to work hard. Our work ethic was really great. And we thought that we were onto something really cool. So our first band that wasn't good, turns out, had a record deal. And then we put corn together and we didn't know how influential we would be but we knew from the beginning it was really good. And we were so into it. I honestly, I don't even, well, no, I, I take it back. I started doing the, the, uh, the paperwork for homeschooling, right? To finish, uh, finish it. And it got so overwhelming trying to do with the band and all that. I, I couldn't do it. So I, yeah, I just, I, I let it all go. Not the best message for kids out there listening to this because I don't recommend it because probably less than 1% of bands actually make it. So don't mess that up. You go to school, you get your certificate, you go to college or trade school, whatever you want to do, you have to do it. Don't do what I did because counting on it is not going to happen for like 99% of people. Yeah. Don't do it. Okay. Graduate high school and go on. Out of all, okay. Why did you call Freddie a little bitch? I just called Freddie a little bitch. Who? Fieldy. Why did you call a Fieldy a little bitch? Um, you know what? At the time, I was really angry about a bunch of stuff. And um, honestly, I don't really, well, fuck. Yeah, you know, I can't really say exactly what it was, but uh, it, was, yeah, it was pretty immature and stupid of me to even say that kind of shit. Um, I know. Wish I hadn't said it. It was it was a really immature, dumb thing to do. But um, it is what it is. When Ray got COVID, do you think there was a chance you would fill in? Say what? Uh, when Ray got COVID, do you think there was a chance for you to fill in? You no, absolutely in? not. Do you still talk to those guys anymore? No. Do you wish you did? Yeah, part of me wishes I did. I mean, we were we were full on brothers, you know. It was it was we were really really close. I mean, as the year went by and the band got bigger, you know, we it ended up having separate buses for everyone, and um, and you know, all traveled separately. Sometimes we would stay at different hotels, but I don't think it was ever because we didn't like each other. It was just because as the band got bigger we wanted to have more room, especially with the bus thing. That, I wasn't like, we, we don't, want, don't want to be together. We need to be apart. That was just simply because we got big enough that we could afford to have the room for the whole bus. You know, it would mean two other guys, maybe three at the most. But yeah, we, we um, yeah, there was definitely a brotherhood between us, for sure. 
Now let's say hypothetically you were locked in a room with them and you would have to say something and you said something to them after all this time. What would you say? What would you say if you were in a locked room? What would you say to them? I would tell them I have nothing but love for them and I appreciate what all of us collectively were able to accomplish and I have nothing but gratitude, not just for the, the, the other members of Corn, but for the fans that made this all possible and made this career, you know, what it became. But I would mostly say I, would, I was thankful for knowing all of them and being a part of this whole band with them. The 20th anniversary. And say, what? We are brothers. We need to fucking work that shit out. Yeah, you definitely do, man. Definitely do. The 20th anniversary is coming out for this uh, first album. Do you think you will be a part of it? 20th anniversary for this guy? That's past. <laughs> uh, well, sh- let me see here. 20th? No. 30th. No, I won't be part 30th. Of that. 30th. Yeah, 30. I got my math wrong. Sorry. Well, making me feel old again. Damn. Oh, you're already 30 years. My God. Oh. 30 years. When's that going to be? Shit. Two years. Two years. Ooh, man. I didn't know you were that ancient. God. Gee, you know, because I just shaved. You, wouldn't, you don't have to see all the gray shit in my beard. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my dad years. did. Holy crap. Man, we were little freaking kids when we made this thing. Oh, my God. You years. might. Is there a chance you might do anything with them, or you really don't know? Because I know you've been saying how they haven't really just talked at all. But yeah. is there really any of a chance that maybe there might be a little one more reunion? It would. I mean, it would obviously take all of us talking. Okay, definitely a um, big talk. Okay. So far, I don't see any of that any of that even happening. But you never know. You just never know. 30 years is a big deal, man. 30 years. It is a big deal. Shit, I feel old. <laughs> How do you think my yeah. grandfather feels? <laughs> 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 now, let's get back to basis. Um, bias, sorry. You guys are a brand ambassadors to a brand of tequila. Tequila. How did you hook up with them? How did you hook up with that? that I'm sorry. You guys are an in ba- uh, brand ambassadors to a brand of tequila. Who hooked you up with them? Uh, with the tequila? Yeah, tequila. Breaking in a sequence, tequila. Yeah. yeah. It's on um, your Facebook, bro. Tuco. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Shows how much I'm on Facebook. Or, yeah, I don't, I don't even freaking know, man. I'll look this shit up as soon as we're done. Tuco, Tuco, you don't love your life, man. Tuco, what does it say about tequila? Uh, you're just a printed master or something. Branded master, you're just a branded master. Huh. Man, you don't even remember your own post. I like tequila. I'll have to look into that, man. What kind of tequila? Silver or gold? Silver. Silver, okay. You can't Don't do that. Me. You can't. You can't do that gold stuff. What? I can't. What? I I, I said what? You can't drink okay. that gold stuff. You can't drink that gold stuff. Well, yeah, I, I can drink anything, obviously, but prefer Don Julio silver, hmm. if given the choice. <laughs> That's pretty cool, man. You can just call them up for a case whenever you want. Then you can just call them up. I, you know what, honestly, I got to look into this shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, you guys have been playing some shows. How has it been going on the world? How has it been? Um, you know what? I actually did not go on this last, I think it was maybe five shows. I, I, didn't, I didn't actually go with the guys. My dad passed away. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I'm, I won't explain all the circumstances, but... I was my head I was in a really bad place for a little while and they did not I, I didn't go I didn't do the, little, the quick tour with them I did not do that 
sorry to hear that, man. Sorry about that, you know. Yeah, sorry about you. your father, man. Definitely yeah. seems like a really cool guy. Yes, my dad was was a cool guy. Yeah, thank you. Well, hey, no, man. Sorry about sorry to hear that. I know what it feels like losing a family member sometimes, you know. Yeah, it's all good. Thanks. Is it scary being out on the road with all these uh sprays, with all these uh, bands getting COVID when touring? All the bands getting what again? Uh, COVID. Oh. Again, I have not been on the road since COVID, but um, a couple of our guys on this little, I think five shows they did, a couple of those guys got, they did get COVID. Hmm. Can't say who. I seen you guys played with uh, Tommy Vex. How was that? I didn't. I wasn't on the tour, man. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I keep forgetting. <laughs> that was kind of. Uh, it just that that was kind of most of my questions I had on the page. I make a no. page. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite memory from playing a show? Favorite memory? What? From playing a show. What is your favorite memory from playing a show? I mean. I've, there's so many memories and so many great shows. I, I can't really say one specific memory because there are hundreds and hundreds or thousands. Um, I would just say the whole entire thing, as I said before, was literally a dream come true. And it, it's, I mean, as I said earlier, I still can't believe it actually happened, but it did. What is your worst? Worst crowd? Uh, worst memory from playing a show. All worst right. memory? Um, when I, okay, how to explain this? Okay, in, during issues, I had a pinched nerve, came down my neck, ooh, over ooh. the shoulder, and down my arm. And my first, well, everyone's first rib is like up here. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's pretty, not common, but it happens to say baseball pitchers and, and, uh, football quarterbacks would do this motion a lot. Oh. The, the rib was hitting the nerve from doing this and it was making my hand go to sleep. So I had to come off the road and seek out medical advice to figure it out because I didn't know what was going on. Cause just my hand was going numb and I had no other symptoms of anything whatsoever. So when I went out on stage during a show, my wrist literally gave out of me where I was just going like my high hat hand, my right hand. I was just going like this. I couldn't even hold a stick, let alone focus to play. It was, it was horrible. Wow. So I'm, going, going I'm, out on stage and, and having to tell the crowd I had to stop the show was, it was horrible. I felt like shit. Um, you know, felt like I let everyone down, let the band down, let the fans down. And, um, it, it, yeah, that was, that was probably be easily my worst, uh, Worst memory, worst moment in the band. Hey, you can't blame yourself, man. Life is life. Life is life. I, I had no idea what it was at first. I, you know, I felt horrible. The I don't, I don't understand this. How is this go like that? <laughs> I, I, I really don't have no idea. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't explain that. Sorry, not a doctor. <laughs> yeah. What is next Maybe, for you? What's that? What is next for you? What is next? Um. Next is. Probably more recording. We, we have a whole other uh, batch of songs that we have not professionally recorded. I was talking about earlier. Um, so probably the next move, we'll, we'll, we're continuing to write, obviously, but um, probably record our newest songs. Should be our next move. How do my followers follow you? Say that again. How do my followers follow you? How do followers follow me? Yeah, how uh, do my followers? It's Instagram, it's Silvera David. I don't even know why. And um, Facebook is just David Silvera. There's, there's, there's a fan page and a, uh, a personal page. And they can get all your tour dates and merch and stuff there, right? Um, the merch is probably on my Instagram. If it's not, I will put it up there. Um, it's probably not on the Facebook, but um, there, the, right now, there are no tour dates booked, just writing. But as soon as there are, yes, they will all be up there. 
hey man is it okay if i can maybe have an autograph because i i have a really big collection i have a lot of famous people would you maybe absolutely me- after we talk here i'll give you my home address oh, you want to send it to me yes thank absolutely you. all right thank you so much man i really appreciate that i would be happy to do it thank you I'm collecting it from all the old rock legends. I keep collecting all their magazines and stuff like that. I and have uh, from, old stuff. Yeah. Old stuff. Yeah. If I wouldn't have shaved, you would have really been rubbing that shit in. <laughs> <laughs> you are a legend, man. You were a pretty thank cool. You. Well, thank you for being on my show, man. I hope the next time he talks at the backstage at one of your shows, it was a my thank you. It was my pleasure talking to you. Thank you. It was great to be on your show. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Have a wonderful night, man. See ya. You too. Bye.